my entire life changed in one moment. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just glad that my mom got me out of there. And I'm yeah. like, oh, yeah, this is bad. I don't want to be treated this way. I don't know. It's hard right. for someone who can't communicate that at their age to to say that or to completely understand that it's bad because that's the adult. You're supposed to listen to the adult, you know. Right. Hey everyone, I have two really incredible guests today with amazing stories. Um, here they are. First one is Mary Jackson and her daughter, Lily Jackson. Hey ladies, how are you? We are um, awesome. We're just so excited to be here with you tonight. Now you two are, uh, you're, Mary, you have a family of five? Yes. Am I right? Yes. And just busting with talent everywhere. Just, I mean, from what I've seen, there's so much talent oozing everywhere, including yourself. Let's first talk about, Mary, what you have going on. But before we do, tell me about your family, who they are, what they do, and uh, some of their talents. And then we'll talk about what you have going on. All right. Well, so I have three kiddos and um, a hubby and a dog. And um, so my hubby is, you know, he works in the corporate world. And so the rest of us seem to be the creatives in the family. We, um, let's see, my oldest is 23 and Elizabeth, she is in grad school and music is her focus. Lily is 20 and she's her second year of college and animation is her focus. And I have a 10 year old son and two of my kiddos are on the spectrum. One is Lily and then one is my son. And uh, we have a very busy household. Um, my girls sing together. They are recording artists and performing artists. And then both of them have their passions as well. You know, uh, my oldest, Elizabeth, is a clarinet uh, performer as well and writing music and composing and things like that. And Lily is, you know, animation and um, writing as well. well. She's got, you know, a couple books in the works that we're, we're, we're trying to find a literary agent or a publisher for a five book series, why a sci-fi fantasy. So it's pretty exciting. And, um, and then um, little guy is, you know, plays drums and, and piano and um, he's got all of his little things that he does, but you know, we, we do a lot of stuff together, which is really nice. I always kind of wanted to have a family business and um, it's really interesting the way that it's all come about together because even though my being a children's author, my books were divinely inspired, but they were also inspired by my children. And so my son's face is on the cover of the one of the children's series I have. And um, the first book has music to it. And my girls actually got to record the songs, which is kind of what preempted their their music career. That's and awesome. um, I, yeah, I, I have a picture. I, tell me if this is. Um... Hmm. I grabbed yeah. this off of your profile. Are these these are two of your yeah. books, or? Yes, and the third one is on pre-order right now. And okay. these, actually, today I just found out. Look at me! Just got a five-star uh, um, editorial um, review and a Reader's Choice Award. Um, so did the first book, and so I'm just so incredibly honored for that because these books were inspired by my son and my children and the premise of these these books are about um knowing how much you're loved and however you come into this world you are perfectly okay just the way you are and so there are i am pages in all three of these books and it's to get kids started on that positive language very early on in their life because we need to teach them these things so that they're having a hard time, things are going wrong, or they have challenges, 
they have those empowering words that they can gear themselves to get through those times, to have resiliency and to know that what they feel about themselves is going to be more important than what somebody else might say about them. Right. Now, how can um, somebody find those in order to these books uh, on your website or just anywhere? Um, Amazon, you can find Amazon. them on Amazon. And then if you click on, um, they're, they should be up on my website now, but if you click on them, it'll show you all the different places you actually you can go buy them. Definitely put a link in the description. And, and so the people want to check these out, they definitely can. Um, well, I, I, I put your website in there too, and a couple other links that you can send me, I'll put in there as well. And I'd love for them too, because we, we have a goal and our goal is to, um, I mean, over the next year, I'd love to reach a million children because we've got to give them positive books and we want everyone, anyone to come on board with us, buy a copy, donate it, you know, whatever you need to do, just help us get these books into kids' hands and, and help empower them because kids need that empowering literature in their life, literacy and literature. So now Lily, you are the, you're the middle child. Am I right? Yes. And um, you, you're 20. You're in uh, college right mm -hmm. now. Yes. And tell me just a little bit about what you're doing right now in college and what you're uh, working on in college. All right. Um, well, I'm at Lipscomb University in Nashville. I am a sophomore and I'm studying animation because uh, I want to eventually create um, my own films and stories, which are the stories I am writing right now. So I, I'm mainly just studying like the basics for animation. So it's not just like 2D animation, which is drawn, it's 3D animation, which is moving a computer rig, which I never thought I'd be able to do it. But then they gave me the rig and told me what to do. And then I did it. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> cool. that is so um, and then also storyboarding, which is used for all forms of film and entertainment, mm -hmm. which I found it's fascinating to me. Like, I remember one of my classes in storyboarding was like, they even did it for live action films. And I'm like, that is so cool. Just thinking about that and like all the pieces of this industry that can go so many places. Now, I do want to touch on a little bit about your own uh, story, Lily. And I know you, everybody has like a, has their own story. And mom, you can chime in as, as, as often as you want, but you're 20 years old now and you, mm -hmm. um, you've had an interesting life. Can you tell me as much as you're, you're comfortable with telling us, because you never know who else might be going through something. You were nonverbal up until a certain age, four or five. I, I didn't speak clearly like clear English, it was what um, moms told me is called cluttering. She also mm -hmm. called it my fairy language because I would say like gibberish and then be like, okay, mom. And she yeah, would, I would say, I, I, I think <laughs> she would go, because we have it on video. She would go, dig, 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 okay, mommy. And you'd be like, uh, I'm not sure, but sure, you know. <laughs> you sure I understood agree. what I was saying, apparently. I, I barely <laughs> remember this, but right. um. Like, it, it was strange, I guess. And I remember mom teaching me how to talk, like, pronounce things clearly. I that I remember you bringing it up a while back, and I was like, that is ingrained in my memory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was like um, teaching your child their own language, which, which who is, we're not really prepared to do that. You know, we just think our child, we take a lot of things for granted in this world. And we have a mm -hmm. child who can't talk clearly and they can't communicate. So they're screaming and yelling at you because they're so frustrated over just trying to say, mommy, can I have a hug? Or mommy, I need this. Or I'm hungry. Or, um, you know, I'm tired. I need to go to bed. And they can't verbalize these things. It's very frustrating for a child. And it's frustrating for the parents because there's a lot, the, the volume is so much higher um, in the communication because the child is screaming at you. You. I mean, she could be a foot away and she's yelling at me because she doesn't think I can hear her. I taught her her ABCs through sound, not saying them. We, we, we worked on singing them and the sound of how they, you know, like, ah, you know, ah, you know, that kind of thing. And that's how she learned her, 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 le her letters because she couldn't just say A, B, C, D. She wasn't able to do that. Honestly, thinking about that, I've noticed that I learn like music now, audible things, mainly audible now, which 
That's very interesting. I'm like kind of realizing yeah. that now. So she was about two and a half when she was diagnosed with um, mm-hmm. developmental delay. Um, uh, uh, they weren't sure about autism right then at that point at two and a half, but it was more developmental delay, uh, language delay, um, sensory processing, and something called NOS, which was non-other specified. So like they couldn't figure out exactly what was going on with her. So like sometimes you would say something to her and then she'd kind of look off and then she would respond. So it's like, I used to call it, she'd left her body and came back. We laughed about it. You had to to find humor and things, right? So it was like this glitch that would happen for her auditory and her, it's like from here to here, there was like a glitch and, and nobody could ever really figure it out. Um, and, and she, she actually outgrew it, It, but she was four before I ever heard, I love you. And I know she doesn't remember that, but mom does. Everything that I'm doing now, I I never thought I would be doing when I was very little. Like, I always knew I'd do art. I always knew I'd draw. According to my mom, she tells me that I have been drawing since I was like, what? 18 before? years old. Yeah. Mom, you taught me how to express things that I was going through, through creative outlets. And I, I've always adored that in my life. So art is one of them. I've always held that dear to my heart and I never want to leave it. That's another reason why I'm in animation because animation is a form of art and it's a way I can express um, Mm -hmm. things that I love and things that I'm passionate about, Uh, but also singing and dancing and um, acting, just uh, music, just all of it. It's a beautiful thing. And I feel like, I don't know, it's something that helped me a lot with processing. And I feel like it's something everyone should at least try throughout preschool and um, elementary. I was at public school and um, during the the time of like nonverbal and all that struggling and diagnosis and all that in preschool, I was placed in a classroom for uh, special needs kids. Yeah, you and, were four and you were five during that time. And um, so in preschool, I I went through a, a traumatic experience with my teacher who was abusive verbally and uh, physically. Um, I did not understand it when I was a child. Um, I saw it as, oh, I'm, I'm doing something wrong. I was doing something wrong when... Um, I'm looking at it now. I'm like, no, I wasn't. I was just a kid. <laughs> yeah, I made mistakes, but um, every kid does because they're just learning. But the way uh, she addressed it was, um, I guess you could say traumatizing for everyone that was in that classroom. Um, it went on for about eight months before we it, were called by the police department to let us know what, what had happened and they had taken her out. Mm-hmm. Um, classroom, and she was under investigation by the depart the police department, the school, and um, the Department of Children's Services. So, yeah, it yeah. was that was that was the hardest phone call I've ever received in my life. I, I can't imagine. I can't imagine. My entire life changed in one moment. Yeah, yeah. I'm just glad that my mom got me out of there. And I'm yeah. like, oh, yeah, this is bad. I don't want to be treated this way. I don't know. It's hard for right. someone who can't communicate that at their age to to say that or to completely understand that it's bad because that's the adult. You're supposed to listen to the adult, you know, right. stuff like well, that. Well, and everything she would, anything she could verbalize to me, I would question. And it was met with, no, that didn't happen, you know, because – you have a child with the child saying and what the teacher is saying. And as a parent, you don't realize that you have the power that you have in that, except for that it, it, when there's no witnesses that will come forward and there's no video camera to verify that it's a, he said, she said situation. It, it was bad enough, Jeff, that there are families that moved away out of the state. Wow. I remember the day yeah. I, uh, it was after class, we were packing up stuff. And I, I, she told me to do something. It was one of them. I, wasn't there like three teachers in there? 
Yeah, you had a teacher in two aides. Yes. It was it was one of them, the aides, I'm pretty sure. I don't know, but they all whatever. Anyways, um, I wasn't doing something they told me to, and I remember crying and then one of them grabbing my arm and like swinging me around to the other side of these shelves because I wasn't on the right side or something. And then I I stuck my tongue out on her like a kid would, right? And then I told mom and mom was she told me to go apologize, but then she figured it out. And oh that was yeah. the way that I think that was right yeah, before I think that was right before and, everything happened. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah. So, you know, that was right as all it, it's sort of like, you know how when you have a perfect storm and everything blows up and it was like right at that point that and they the teacher tried to put it back on Lily that she was the one who was wrong and that, yes, she should be apologizing to me. And then it was like the the next thing I knew she'd been, you know, she, the, the school didn't tell us what happened. The school told us that she left because of family issues and it was spring break. And when we came back is when we all were made aware by the police department and child services of what happened. School didn't tell us hmm. when I called the school because of the phone call I received, cause I was like a crazed mother. Right. Right. And I called the school and of course she never went back there again ever, but I called the school and they were like, well, you know more than we do. And I, 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 I can't even tell you what came out of my mouth, but I'm sure it was not polite. And I went down to the school and I had a meeting with the principal and just chewed her out. Like, I've never chewed yeah. anyone out like that before ever <laughs> in my life. And I, I, it's hard to remember all the things back then because some of those things you tucked away. Mm -hmm. But I do know that... There were lots of phone calls between the families, what anybody knew, what had happened, um, what we were piecing together of the story between all of us because we were desperate and, and terrified and scared and and horrified. You know, I remember department the Department of Children's Services coming to our house to interview Lily. And she was, I remember it was pouring down rain and she was sitting at the kitchen table and she wouldn't answer any questions out loud because remember she still couldn't talk very well. Like she couldn't communicate and tell us things like what we had to find out everything through the investigators. Um, even when she was, because then they had a forensic psychologist that came in to interview everyone, all uh, the children, and they still couldn't get a lot of, some of her drawings were the expressions of what was going on for her. But um, we, um, we, they, I remember her sitting there at the table in her high, her chair, her booster seat or whatever, and her only whispering in the ear of the Department of Children's Services officer because she wouldn't say anything out loud. And then we had to take, we had to obviously go to therapy. And that started a process of many, many, many years of therapy. Of, of, of uh, weekly, sometimes uh, daily. And um, I remember it was six months before she could say her teacher's name to the therapist out loud because she wouldn't say it out loud. She was so scared. I mean, she had just right. it threatened her so much. So it was grandparents day and somebody witnessed something in the lunchroom and they called either it was like a perfect storm, Jeff. So it was like somebody witnessed something on that day and then they made a call. And at the same time they made a call, somebody else who witnessed something in the school wrote a letter and turned it in to the principal and called the Department of Children's Services. So like everything converged at one time and it just all blew up. And it was just, it was, it was just like no experience any parent ever 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 wants to go through ever anyways we, she's so much better now we've done lots of therapy we've done lots as a family but you know when you're going through something like that you can't go to therapy as a family because it gets brought out in court and they can right. turn anything they want against you and they will mm -hmm. and so we had to go through that alone 
and that is just wow yeah. it's uncomfortable to go through that we made it we did it we did, we did. We're, on this, we're on the side of it we're strong because of yeah. it a lot of things happen in life like we don't we don't get to choose what happens to us in life what blessings we get what curses yeah. we get but we do get to choose what we do about them yeah and um i i i don't want to choose to let this rule over my life that's wrong that's right that's right it's it's when you grow when you actually you, you grow into who you're meant to be and yes that happened to me but what i do about it and how i overcome it is what really counts that's true that's true it was a long process <laughs> i'll say mm -hmm. that it was a long process but it will be okay in the end because god's got me thank mm -hmm. the lord he helped me so much <laughs> yeah through everything along with my family there's a lot but of course there's things you know we're always going to have to overcome and grow from but finding that strength and truth yeah. Yeah. she's been much more forgiving yeah than i have been able to forgive yeah. all these years well I mean, half times because i don't tough. remember everything that happened right. <laughs> so, it's, it's, yeah yeah when you have a child who is damaged at the hands of someone else how yeah. do you think that would make you feel yeah. there's nothing that ever makes that okay ever because what, what an abusive person doesn't understand when they're inflicting on someone else, whether you're a narcissist, whether you're mentally unwell or whatever it is, or it's just what you learned in life in your own environment. When you put that on someone else, you can cause damage for the rest of a person's life. And the younger a person is, the deeper that goes and the harder that is to heal from. And so it is never okay ever, ever, ever. Okay. Never. No, well, I think, I don't know, something in our world that needs to be taught today is like how far something that is said to a child can go and how to properly address children, I guess, because the child like mine, it doesn't, it doesn't always know that it's bad or wrong or you say something wrong to them and they think it's the end of the world because they're the worst person in the world because of the way you are reacting to them. Um, sorry, I'm speaking from experience. Yeah. Um, I know that throughout middle school, high school, um, meeting a new teacher and maybe they got a little upset with me, my, my little brain would go, you're, you're terrible. <laughs> I was like, that's not true. Fear is a powerful thing. And it's hard mm -hmm. when it drives every action that you make. However, knowing <laughs> with him, I know that it's it's okay because he's got me. And right. it is okay to look at the world in a different light. Um, it is okay. It is safe. I promise. <laughs> yes, things will happen. Sometimes we'll make misjudgments. We're human. We all make mistakes. I have had to learn how to tell myself this. It's, it's okay. I'm sorry. I'm like crying right now. <laughs> no, you're 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 100 right. You're 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 more mature than um, most most of those teachers, you know, back then. Definitely. This occurred the year 2008 2009, and we didn't even get to trial till 2013. And you know that really? that's a long time to deal with that. Yes, it was right before was born and really? then all the things not to be yeah i mean there's lots of things that i haven't talked to lily and looks up because I, I dealt with it as an adult and you're trying to sh you're trying to shelter right. your child from all this trauma you know and um it was it was a long time to go through all that that's many many years of trying to fix things no closure I, I, I lost faith in everything, Jeff, everything, life, mankind, God, the justice system. Everything. I can't even imagine. Yeah. And I feel like God brought me Carson when he did, because I feel like he was the puzzle piece. Isn't that funny? Cause that's autism. Um, 
<laughs> to put our family back together to bring us because when he was born and what he and I went through, I didn't have time to grieve through this whole process still that was happening with Lily. I had to raise a baby. I had to raise children. I had to keep going, you know? So I feel like it was almost a saving grace for me in my life because it's very easy that somebody could grieve themselves to death over something like this with a child. So for us being on this side of things is a grace of God. Us being yeah. on this side is I mean, my belief system in God and my, my relationship in, in that belief that way is more is stronger than it's ever been in my life. And um, knowing that, you know, if we can survive things like this, other people can too. Uh, and I'm so glad to hear that your faith is even more so because God. that sometimes can go completely other way. Lily yeah. could be like, no, there's no God. For, not at all. The, this For him <laughs> to let me go through this, all that's blah. Because there's so many that go through different things and they're like, oh, forget that. But right. it's you, you're totally not. You're totally no. leaned into God and your faith is probably even bigger. And that is, that is what's yeah. getting you through everything. Um, and your talents alone. Um, let's look, let's look at some of these things. I, I got some of your pictures here, Lily. Well, you can tell me a little bit about these. This is so cool. Tell, tell us, Lily, what is this? I mean, it's obviously um, a girl. Um, <laughs> well, this is actually one of my assignments, but it's what we call in the in the character design realm and all that a turnaround sheet. So it's in an animation what a character would look like if you were to turn them in time. So, okay. um, so it's a front view, a three quarter, three quarter side, back, and three quarter back. But just to know how the character would turn in order to bring them to life, and okay. so I do want to say. One reason why I went into animation in the art industry is because I want to share stories with lessons mm -hmm. in them, much like the one we've been talking about, and right. share them with people, but in in um, in the most creative manner. Because I don't know, when I was a kid, whenever I saw animation like this, my eyes lit up, and I wanted to know. I wanted to know who this person was. I wanted to see their life, um, and that's something I want to do with my career is to share yeah. that, that love for other people. And um, mom mentioned I'm writing a, a YA sci-fi fantasy. It's not really a YA, which is young adult. It's, it's for all ages because I, I want this. The, these lessons are for all ages. And That's cool. I want Let's to share that with this next picture here. Um, <laughs> these are um, cool. five characters from the book I've written that I was just talking about. So, um, my my first book of a five book series that I want to write is called United Nine. It's a sci fi fantasy about a group of kids who find it's like a superhero book, <laughs> but um, okay. they find this magical crystal. I say magical, it kind of is um, that gives them powers, and uh, they kind of have to figure that all out and stuff. And they're taken to this place called the APSNA, which is called, which is uh, the Association for People with Supernatural Abilities. And uh, while there, they discover that their power is a little, little different from everyone else's, which like in, what was it? <laughs> a summary we wrote for it, because I'm terrible at telling book summaries, but in our summary um, that mom helped me write. Thank you, mom. <laughs> Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, we tell it like because of this, it awakens like a darkness. They eventually have to defeat it, but throughout the story, um, they all overcome something. I, I teach a lesson through. I try to at least through every single one of them because it's nine characters. That's hard to do, but um, in this drawing, I have what I call United Five, which was the group before them. But because of this group here, um, the origin of the story kind of started, but. Um, two of the characters, the one on the far left and the girl on the far right are two of my main characters, but this is what they looked like a long time ago and stuff. Now you're in the process of doing this or is it almost done? Or no, the book, first, I, first it's been written and done. I okay. have written it. It is now 550 pages. I have no idea how, but it is. 
And is it all comics or is it comics and reading or what is it? This, um, my book is written. I have, I wrote it out, which it's really funny. Honestly, when I was, when I was little, we've talked about this, I had a processing disorder. So mm -hmm. I, I had really bad reading comprehension skills when I was very young. And when I was little, I was like, I'm never going to write a book. They're so boring. I never <laughs> tried to actually write books. <laughs> now, you, now look at you. And I'm, I'm, the, big, the big books too, like Harry Potter length. I'm like, how did I do that? I don't know how. That's I, all I got. <laughs> she totally, <laughs> she totally right now. <laughs> yeah, one, yeah. one last picture here. Here's this picture. This yeah. is really, really, it looks cool? intense. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So mom's read this chapter where the scene happens. But um, so the guy down there, that is my villain. <laughs> His name is Ren. Um, and the dragon is another one of the characters who actually he transforms into this huge 100 foot dragon. Um, and it's like the height of the battle, which is towards the end of the book. But for an assignment at school, I actually, I had to draw a giant. And I was like, I could do this scene for my book. <laughs> and this was the scene where technically, yeah, the character turned into this dragon. And the villain was like, oh, shoot. <laughs> and um, <laughs> see how big he is. That is cool. I know. Isn't yeah, it beautiful? I love the blue. Struck by lightning, but, you know, it's fun. <laughs> He doesn't die. I don't kill off my characters. I, I don't like doing that in stories. Oh, okay. <laughs> all the time. It depends. I don't do it in the first book, at least. I don't... I don't know. I don't like the darker sides of fantasy all the time because mm -hmm. of the messages I'm trying to get across. Mm -hmm. Because these uplifting stories can exist. And I, I, mm -hmm. I'm making it exist. <laughs> and so you, you have... If if someone wants to buy your books, can they buy yours? No, no not we, we, no. We have to find a publisher. Okay. Really. Okay. So we're, we're, we need to find some publishers or something. Yeah, I know, right? I, yeah, I see. Well, it's a five share and two. No, no. Yeah. Earlier, I mentioned how how we're gonna if we want to get a hold of either you two. You got two websites. I put up the Mary E. Jackson. Then there's this website, Sisters J, which is the name of your singing group with with your sister Elizabeth, but there's right, also contact it. information on there as well. So if someone's like, Hey, I want to, uh, do something and talk to you about whatever, um, they can go on, on this website and find out how to get a hold of you. Right. Yes. Yeah. My contact information is on both because I manage the girls music. So my contact okay. is on there with our publishing company. And, um, you know, if anybody wants to book an interview or for music or, you know, an event or speaking or whatever, cause you know, we, we do all that. So we, we've done a lot of stuff together. You know, we're, you, you've seen the video, the last one the girls have done called breathe in. And that's our mm -hmm. most recent, I say our release cause we, we do all this together, but it's got, um, it's all about breathing in and remembering who you are, who God made you to be. It's going to be okay. And, and we decided to um, um, connect it to, uh, you know, bridging the gap between diversity and inclusivity. And so in the video, we have kids with autism, we have kids with Down syndrome and, and, and your typical kids. And really, I don't like using all those words, but it's, it's about bringing all of us together, no matter how we came into this world to celebrate mm -hmm. that we're all and wonderful and, and loving life and finding those joyous places you know um there's not bad out there we're not interested in that we're That's interested good. in the good stuff um, i believe that seeing so the things that we can overcome rather than letting them control our life is something that makes life worth living because you discover who you are and who god made you to be and what your purpose is and i think that's amazing Amen to that absolutely pursue that passion because i feel like when we pursue ourselves who god made us to be to the fullest of our ability we are glorifying god through that because we are being his creation and what he created us to be <laughs> my wise old sage <laughs> <laughs> amen. amen well thank you both for coming on and sharing all of that that's that is amazing journey that you've had and you're only 20 you know um there's there's so much I can just, I just know there's so much ahead for you. I can't wait to see how, what journey you have going forward, you know, and what God has for you going forward. I, I just can't wait to see how that goes because I know it's, it's, you got a bright future, an incredible future. 
you and your uh, sister and your brother, your family. It's it's amazing, absolutely amazing. And I appreciate you both coming on and, and sharing all that that you did. That Thank that's you, awesome. Thank you again so much, and we will be in touch soon. Thank you, Jeff, so much. Blessings to you, my friend. Blessings to you Thank and you. your your God friendship for sure.